Hey everyone, it's Rob B here with Rob D, and it's a popular episode this week. Everybody wants to know where are the hotspots? What areas are we bigging up in 2024? Where should you be investing your hard earned money? All of that is about to be revealed. Yes, welcome to the Property Podcast. Thank you for joining us. You want to know what we picked as our hotspots and we're not going to keep you waiting long. So let's get into it and stick around to the end where we're sharing a tool that will help you listen to this podcast in a slightly different way. On to our news story this week and shock headline forecaster changes forecast because it is looking like it might be wrong. That in itself is not news, but there is something interesting behind it, which is that the property consultancy Knight Frank had previously predicted that property prices would fall by 4% by the end of 2024. But they've now come out and changed that prediction just a bit. They now think prices will go up by 3%. And this is sparked by the expectation that interest rates will come down. But the base rate, of course, has not moved. There's no suggestion that it is going to move. But the market is now convinced that because of inflation falling, there will be rate cuts this year. Therefore, lenders are cutting their fixed rates, which is good for the housing market. So even though nothing has actually happened at all yet, it can have a meaningful effect on the market. And that's what is behind Knight Frank's decision. There have also been several other indicators about how the year might shape up, including some really interesting data from Rightmove. We covered all that on last week's Market Update show, so if you haven't listened to that, do go check it out. There's a drum that we've been banging on this podcast for many years now, which is not to just invest where it's more convenient, but to invest in the areas that are going to be optimal for your returns. We've spoken extensively about why this is a good idea and how to go about doing it, but there's a problem. The UK isn't the biggest country, but it's big enough to cause you some severe analysis paralysis if you don't have any pointers for where you should be looking. And so that is where today's episode comes in. We are going to be revealing our hotspots for 2024. Rob, these are the areas that we have our eye on, not just for the purposes of talking about them on the podcast, not just for our own investments, but for our entire business. That's right, because we practice what we preach. We talk about these areas, but we have been talking about these areas internally in our team for a while because we are planning always right where's next where are we targeting for investments for us and our clients so this is the list that we are targeting so we are active in these areas we are actively trying to source deals in these areas there's other areas as well and we'll talk about that at the end how we approach it in general but these are the top of our list these are the areas that we want And Rob, you've already put out some videos on YouTube on this very subject. So if people haven't already headed over to YouTube and subscribed, make sure you do. There's multiple videos on areas to invest in this year. So loads and loads of content there. And first on our list, Rob, is an area that was classed as both underrated on your videos and as a hotspot. Because it is underrated, generally. Not enough people talk about this area. Although we have been big on this area for a year or two now, and rightly so, it's Derby. Yes, Derby has made our hotspots list again. It was on there last year as well. But it is still underrated. If you came along to one of our Property Hub Select meetups and you asked people to name areas that they consider to be hotspots, I reckon a fair number of them would say Derby because they've been watching our videos and listening to our podcasts and doing their own research. If you step outside that room and you stop people on the street, or even if you talk to property investors more generally, Derby would not feature prominently. So it's obvious to us that Derby has got loads going for it. It's got one of the highest average wages in the country outside of London. And despite that, property prices are relatively cheap. And the reason that it has high wages is that it has a whole range of quality employers which attract in highly skilled people. And these, of course, skilled workers with high earners are the kind of people you want to have as your tenants. So Derby has been flying under the radar a little bit. But Rob, it does feel like that's changing because we're starting to see developers and even built-to-rent investors start to make their first moves into Derby. You're right, Rob, but they are very much first moves. Derby, for me, reminds me of Manchester. They're very different places, but many years ago, Rob and I went big on Manchester before everybody was talking about it in terms of property investments. And the reason why we went big and early on Manchester is because it was just obvious. It was undervalued. It was underappreciated as an investment opportunity. It was just common sense. And I've not felt like that about an area for a number of years until recently. And that's because Derby has given me that feeling again. It just seems common sense. There's no 
great algorithms that we put together in the background here that have been crunching numbers day and night and suddenly we found this secret location. It's just the basics. You have property prices, which are low compared to what people earn as income, and you've got loads of fundamentals, amazing employment opportunities. It just makes sense that this area will do better than most areas in the future because it has so much going for it and it's underappreciated right now. So Derby, for me, although, yes, it is getting a little bit of attention, it very much is a little bit. And it probably feels like a lot more than that because Rob and I are great fans of it as an area, but it's not. Like you rightly said, Rob, if you go and survey people, go and stop 100 people in the street and say, okay, where should I invest in the UK? I think very few would pick Derby unless they listen to the podcast or follow us on YouTube. So Derby is an incredible hotspot because you've got an opportunity to invest in an absolute fantastic location, but that is completely underrated. So Derby easily made our list this year. And for similar reasons, Rob, number two on our list, it didn't take us too long to put, write this one down. No, the next one nicely illustrates that a hotspot doesn't have to mean some complete gem that everyone else has overlooked or that where you have to be incredibly early, where you have to have some kind of inside information about changes that are coming to an area. A hotspot can stay hot for a long time. And for that reason, Manchester is second on our list. And it'd be tempting to not have Manchester on the list just to mix things up a bit. But the truth is, even though we've been talking about it since 2015, Manchester is still a fantastic place to invest. And I think it's important to be clear what we mean when we're talking about Manchester, because you've got the city centre and then you've got Greater Manchester. Now, the city centre, of course, has moved on in popularity from where it was. You can't buy into Manchester city centre as cheaply as you could have done back in 2015. But it's still very strong as an investment location because there is so much demand in the city centre. Rents for newly let properties in Manchester city centre are rising faster than anywhere else in the country. Which is crazy, isn't it? Because Manchester, as you said, Rob, has been a hotspot for a long time, yet it still powers on with rents because that undersupply is chronic. People are just flocking to the city and the developers can't keep up. I remember three, four years ago, people going, oh, what about oversupply? There's not an oversupply problem here. It's, an, it's clearly, as the rental market is telling us, an undersupply problem. Yeah, despite the thousands and thousands of units that have been built, it's still not enough to soak up the demand. So Manchester city centre still works, but Manchester is about more than just the city centre. It's got multiple boroughs that encompass all kinds of different areas. So you've got Wigan, Bolton, Bury, Rochdale, Stockport and more. So if you take Greater Manchester as a region, that opens up a lot of different areas that you could focus on. We've done deals in multiple Manchester boroughs over the last year, and we'll be looking to do more in 2024. So Manchester being a strong investment location might not be new news, but it absolutely deserves its place on the list. And as Rob said, you know, Manchester is very much more than the city centre, greater Manchester. There's just so much to talk about there. There could be a whole podcast in itself because you've got your Boltons, your Wiggins, your Stockports. The list goes on. And those areas are hotspots in their own right. So if your budget doesn't stretch as far as Manchester City Centre, then there are other opportunities there. So do be brave. Do your research on those other areas because you can find some absolutely fantastic locations. And, of course, all the locations on this list are fantastic. And the third on our list is Birmingham. Birmingham is flying. The money is piling in. There just seems to be a lot of good news around the city at the moment in terms of investment. Birmingham has been a hotspot previously and continues to be one because it's got the second biggest population in terms of city. It fights Manchester and other locations as the UK's second city. I suppose it will depend on how you measure it, but the fact it's in contention for that accolade means that it's a serious place to invest in. Now, Birmingham has trailed Manchester over the last few years. Rents have been lower and there hasn't been as much investment. A lot, but just Manchester has been powering on a lot stronger but it feels Rob over the last few years that gap has narrowed and Birmingham is starting to get similar levels of attention. That's right and again you can see this reflected in the rents. So Manchester and Birmingham are both out there on their own in terms of rental inflation. Both have had a very similar rate over the last 12 months but after those two there's a huge gap to anywhere else. So this tells you that demand in Birmingham is high. This is a new entry. We didn't have this on our hotspots list last year and 
I think that was a mistake, to be honest. I think we should have done. Now, we have done deals in Birmingham over the last year. We've done very strong deals in Birmingham over the last year, but we kind of forgot to tip anyone else off. So we're putting that right. And again, Rob, I think this is another one where you can almost consider Birmingham as a region and look at the strength of Birmingham rippling out rather than just being restricted to the city centre. Because, of course, if rents in the city centre are going up as quickly as they are, that means that commutable areas outside that are going to be looking ever more attractive. Absolutely. That goes for Birmingham, Manchester, Derby and the locations we're about to talk about as well. If you are within 30, 40 minutes of the city centres, then you can still benefit from all the attention that those places are getting, but access it at a lower price point. Now, you have to check the transport links and understand that local region. But if you do and you do your research, you can pick up some incredible opportunities. Fourth on our list, Rob. It's an area that I just don't think gets enough attention. You and I are fans of this area, and we've backed it before on the podcast, and it continues to do well. It's economically very strong, fundamentals galore, yet it's not getting the love it deserves, in my opinion, and that is Nottingham. I've done my best for Nottingham. I really have. I feel like I should have been offered a seat on the tourist board at some point. I've been talking about Nottingham for years and I know plenty of investors in Nottingham who do very well and have been actively buying there, but it just still hasn't found a place in the wider investing consciousness. When do you hear people talking about Nottingham? It doesn't happen. And the nature of it, how it is as a city, some of the restrictions that there are on developments in the city centre mean I don't think that Nottingham is suddenly going to become the centre of the world. There aren't going to be high rises going up all over the place. But that is fine because Nottingham is so fundamentally strong with its employers and its universities and its transport links. That is not suddenly going to change. And the fact that you've got a limited amount of new supply going in means that there's always going to be upward pressure on rents. And again, not wanting to labour the point, but Nottingham is about more than the city centre. And like Manchester, it's got the tram network. So anywhere that's on the tram is going to be attractive. I think, Rob, what I'm saying is I give up. I've tried to let the world know about Nottingham. They're not that interested, but that's okay. I think this now officially falls into the category of an investment location that is just very safe. It's not going to get your heart racing, but it's always going to do very well. And that suits me fine. Yeah, I mean, as investors, if you don't want that, then I'm worried for you. Safe generally does well. That's kind of a nice combo when it comes to investments. Another area that probably does get a bit more attention, but has similar dynamics to Nottingham, is Leeds. And those dynamics I'm referring to is the lack of building that's going on in that city. Leeds is an absolute economic juggernaut. It's got loads in its favour already. Fundamentals are super strong. It just seems economically to be on the up and up. Yet there's hardly any new stock coming to market. And when a new stock has come to market, build-to-rent providers have snapped up those blocks and it's never actually made it to the normal residential market. So Leeds is really interesting. I think there's something building up there, which is that because there hasn't been this building going on, because there isn't enough stock coming through, And there hasn't been really since 08. The building work pretty much stopped for five, six years after 08. And it hasn't picked up anywhere near enough since. But the city goes from strength to strength means that Leeds, for me, is an opportunity in plain sight. I don't think you need talking into investing in Leeds as a place. I'm sure most people listening to this understand how strong Leeds is as an area to invest in. But I don't know if it's local planning. I don't know why developers haven't built in their droves there, but they haven't. And because of that, I think there's this problem storing up or this opportunity storing up where people are going to be looking at Leeds going, I want to get in, but there just isn't stuff there and prices start pushing up more aggressively. They've done very, very well, but I think there's an opportunity there for them to push on further. And again, like we've mentioned before, you've got the surrounding areas of Leeds as well. So if you're within 30 minutes of the city centre, you can still take advantage of these benefits. So that, Rob, is our list. We've got Derby, Manchester, including Greater Manchester, Birmingham, Nottingham, Leeds, and all the surrounding areas that we mentioned. But I think it's important at this point to remind people of some critical do's and don'ts. Because what we don't want people doing, Rob, is running to these areas and just buying any old thing. Because believe it or not, dear listener, it is possible to do an absolutely terrible deal in these amazing hotspots. Yes, we say it every year. We have to keep saying it because it's so important. Buying in a hotspot gives you the best possible setup. You're giving yourself an advantage by buying somewhere hot rather than somewhere cold. But that is not in itself enough to make a good investment. I would rather make a really strong investment 
in a non-hot spot than a below average investment in a hot spot. It's not the case that you can go and buy anything in Greater Manchester and do well. I think the most common mistake that we see here is people going to these areas, especially people who are based in the southeast, seeing how cheap they are relative to the southeast, but then going, well, cheap is good, but what's even better than cheap? The cheapest and gravitating to the lowest priced areas of these cities, which can work if that's your investment strategy. But if you're following the model of wanting to buy something for long term capital growth and have plenty of tenant demand and have an easy time of it along the way, then that's not going to be the best strategy. You need to see this, as I mentioned at the start, as giving you pointers, maybe narrowing down your search a little bit. If you're open to investing anywhere and our strategy appeals to you, then these hotspots are good areas to check out and they can prevent you from being overwhelmed and looking absolutely anywhere. But it is very much, Rob, the start of your research rather than the end. It is. And just like you can do a poor deal in these hotspot areas, you can do an absolutely fantastic deal in just an average or normal, not average, a normal area. And what I mean by not normal is finding an area with great fundamentals. And that's what this is all about, right? It's finding fundamentals and going, okay, has this place got things in its favour? Has it got investments? Has it got good transport links and so on? And you can pick an area that may not be as exciting as those we've listed, but then do an incredible deal there and you are still winning. As an example, Rob and I both last year invested in Loughborough. Now, Loughborough has never made our list, and that's fine. It's probably not going to as well in the near future. And it's not because it's doing poorly, it's just that there's more exciting things happening in other areas. But we did an absolutely corking deal there, and the fundamentals were solid. So, of course, we invested. So, don't be too attached to these areas as well. That's another word of caution. You can do great deals outside of these areas. But if you're going to do an average deal in a hotspot place or a non-hotspot place, I know where I'd choose. I'd obviously go for the hotspot place. But we just throw all these little minor warnings out because we want you to be making the best investment decisions in 2024. It's now time for Hub Extra, the part of the show where we deliver that little bit more value. And remember, if you're looking for value, well, then you've got to be signing up for our free newsletter that goes out every Friday, the Property Pulse newsletter, written by the good man, Rob D himself. So go to propertyhub.net forward slash pulse. That is not the Hub Extra, though, although it deservedly could be. No, Hub Extra, Rob, you've actually put on the sheet that you've got a new podcast app. And I joked to say, well, I don't need another podcast app, but you suggested that you could convince me enough on this show that I will be downloading a new podcast app by the end of it. So go ahead, convince me. Well, I didn't think I needed one either. I've been using Pocket Casts happily for about six years, I think, but I heard enough people talking about Snipped, S-N-I-P-D, that I had to go and check it out. And I was really impressed. And the reason is most podcast players work, right? They play podcasts. You can subscribe to them, you can build playlists, you can listen all good. But what you can't do easily is take notes from podcasts and actually do something with everything you listen to. Because if you listen to shows like this one, I'm sure you're listening to us partly for the entertainment, but you also want to learn something. But unlike with reading a book, whether that's physically or digitally, where you can just highlight it and go away and make notes, it's hard to do with a podcast, especially if you're driving or walking along or at the gym or whatever. So what Snip does is at any time when you're listening, you can just tap a button in the app or you can triple tap your headphones and it'll make a note of the last point made. And it doesn't just go back and do like the last 30 seconds or whatever. It uses AI to figure out from the context where one point ends, the next one begins. And it gives you the actual transcript, but it also uses AI to give you a note that tidies up that transcript. So what you end up with is that piece of information, the thing that you listened to that you wanted to remember. So you can then take that and plug it into whatever you normally do with your notes. It also does cool things like AI chapter markers. So some podcasts have chapters, most don't, but this generates its own and generates highlights as well. So if there's one of those epic three hour podcasts where you want to like go in and get a particular piece of information, you're not interested in all of it, it makes it easy to do that. So the downside is it's not free. There's a cost attached. I got it on a Black Friday deal. I think they run deals every so often, so you can always sign up and then keep an eye out for notifications saying that they're running a sale if you want to. But for me, Rob, this is an easy sell. It does everything that your podcast player already does and more. You've kind of won and lost the challenge, Rob, because I searched for it on the app store and it turns out I already have it on my phone, but I'm not using it. (laughs) So you said you'd get me to download it. I'd already downloaded it. 
So I don't know if that's a win or a loss. Um, I'll let you listening decide. I think I've lost that on a technicality. Uh, (laughs) It's a moral victory. (laughs) You can take it. Right. While we leave you to think about what podcast app you are going to be using moving forward, we'll just remind you that we'll be back with Ask Rob and Rob on Tuesday and, of course, the podcast back on Thursday. Take care. Have fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.